Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching today's Ag Forecast for South America, brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions. Well, we were expecting quite a bit of precipitation to move on a series of fronts that were going to go through parts of Argentina. And earlier in the week, I showed you this is the forecast for the seven days beginning on Monday going through next Monday. And you can see here that we were anticipating quite a bit of rainfall through some key parts of, um, you know, of, of Argentina's growing area. Well, just looking back over the last seven days, we can see that a few thunderstorm complexes have moved through, bringing in some locally heavy rain here uh, as measured from satellite. And so this was just the first uh, couple of rounds of total precipitation for the area. Meanwhile, come up a bit farther to the north into the uh, where we'd expect the Brazilian monsoon to be putting down, you know, over a week time period like this. A lot of colors up here in this three to four to five inch range. And you can see that some places still a bit sporadic on the convection here uh, during this time of year. Now, zooming in and looking at the last 30 days, look at the map over there on the left first. So just in the last month, we look at these deficits and still the CPC shows a broad area here across this section of Brazil that is in this minus four to minus five plus inch range in deficit. But as you come back down into, for example, parts of southern Brazil, Paraguay, and then look down here from Buenos Aires over to Argentina's southern growing areas and getting up here along the Andes Mountains, we do see good precipitation. But there are still a few pockets right in through here, which do extend over toward Cordoba and Santa Fe, where there is some dryness. And just going to the Argentinian um, Meteorological Services website, I pulled up some data for Cordoba. And while we have had a few rainfall events uh, over the last while here, so this takes us back, you know, all the way back to October, just as an example, um, the deficit that's still in place here is quite large. And in some places here, I mean, if you just look over here now, this is in millimeters, but we've got like a 250 plus millimeter deficit. But we have to look lately at the slope of that line. So some rains have come in and we're expecting more still. So I'm going to show you some GRACE satellite data again, but this is going to be surface soil moisture data. So this isn't root zone, but surface soil moisture. And we can see the impact of the drier weather in the north here in Brazil. But do notice you know, where the storms have come through as of late, especially getting down here toward Buenos Aires province, we, we are looking at our wetness percentile being on the, the better side of 50% in this area. What we still have coming in through this region is a bit more storm. So let's watch this carefully for Argentina here. Let's get this playing. We'll pause it right here. As you notice, I'll step you back. This is now getting into Friday morning and afternoon and evening. There is another complex of storms moving through those key growing districts here on Friday afternoon into the evening hours. And then watch early next, uh, well, excuse me, this weekend. This is Saturday morning, afternoon, and evening. There's probably our last good shot at bringing in some storms into this region because after that, this would be Saturday evening. You're going to watch things clear farther to the north. So this low moves off the coast. The funnel boundary is draped here across southern Brazil into uh, Paraguay here. And this is Sunday afternoon and evening. And if I just let this play on out, you'll just notice high pressure takes over here for much of next week. In fact, watch. No major systems forecast by the European model to sweep through as we get here all the way to January 24th. So places that are missed by some of the scattered storms here with the next two systems coming through are then going to go over quite dry beyond that. So if we just put it all together, this is what the models have been projecting. They've done a, a pretty consistent job of picking up on the more active monsoonal moisture through Mato Grosso, Mato Grosso do Sol, Bahia, Tocantins, with drier conditions farther to the east, as you see here. But with those next two fronts swiping through like this, good chances of bringing some more rainfall into this region as we move forward. Into week two, though, the models have continued to go toward this look. So they're leaving that frontal boundary here. But notice the drying that's been happening uh, in Mato Grosso and points to the east of there. And also, while we do see near average to wetter than average conditions right in through here, the models have continued to make the periphery of that over on the drier side of things as well. So it's questioning how long that high pressure area stays in place. And I think we need to watch very carefully right here to see if there's any sort of trend in the models over the next couple of days for what this week two pattern is going to look like. But I, I do want to show you the, that the GFS model, so here's the European, the GFS does have a very similar outlook for week two, which were drier in Brazil, central and northern growing areas, wetter to the south in Brazil, and better chances right in through. So maybe the drier stretch of weather for Argentina after the weekend rainfall moves through may be limited to a, a week, a week to maybe eight or nine days. 
But over the next week, when that happens, when the rains do come through, we're certainly seeing some cooler conditions here with our greatest chances of heat stress in Brazil's eastern growing areas. And as we look out into days 7 through 14, again, as things dry out here, we could see some um, better chances of, of picking up some heat stress overall, uh, given that the pattern is, is really avoiding that region in terms of precipitation. Now, I start to look for some reasons why. I'll tell you, uh, picking up on the flow here across both the Atlantic and the Pacific that's driving the monsoon, trying to understand what the Antarctic Oscillation is doing, trying to understand how La Nina is behaving, the MJR are behaving, I don't see anything that is necessarily constructively interfering. In other words, helping helping things out to take it one way or another. And I think a lot of that is just due to what La Nina is doing. It's got these strong trade winds right here with on either side of it, westerly wind bursts. So one there and one over here. And so in a nutshell, this is what it does to the atmosphere. We see that our best rising motion is here and then loosely over in this area. And the sinking motion is caught in between. But those trade winds over the next, gosh, it's really only over the next let's call it weak, are going to be strong. And then notice as we go beyond there, the blues kind of fade a bit. And, and this could be our last significant big push of this particular La Nina. Now, given that this is the setup, I'll be honest with you, what I'm struggling with is to show you the new one-month outlook from January 21st to February 21st. I had been anticipating things being wetter than this, especially in Brazil's northern growing areas through at least the beginning of February, but the models have now pulled over to this region as going over toward drier. And um, I have had to say this the last couple of videos, but it's the honest truth. I'm, I'm left scratch my head a bit as to the reasons why. What is influencing the tropics to get us here? And it might not be one of those things that I am able to pick up on until it's it's fully going. And then we'll see if the models verify. So like I said last time, why don't we use this as the benchmark against what will compare that time period of um, you know January 21st to February 21st. And we're going to watch the evolution in the European weeklies to see if it adjusts at all over from this drier pattern here. Uh, this could be critical for soybean harvest pace and the planting of the safrina crops, but also to the germination of the safrina crops given the issues we've seen with the dryness in the soils through this area. So I'll watch it carefully and, and we'll keep you up to date. All right. Look forward to give you another update on Monday. Okay. Until then, have a good rest of your week and weekend. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks.